Welcome to Level Playing Field, a podcast where a group of longtime friends get together to talk about the world of video games. Today, we're talking about party games. My name is Andrew Kimball, and I'm your host. Joining me on this episode, I have Joe Summer. It's good to be back. It's good to have you back, buddy. Was, did I only miss one week? It felt like an eternity. And our next guest is <laughs> Dylan Wren. <laughs> hey, people. You did only miss one week, Joe, but you were missed. Yeah, it felt longer than that, right? Yeah, yeah. well, I guess technically for me, it was been <laughs> two weeks, right? I just have to point out for yeah, I, sh I shook my head. Yes, I recognize that. Yeah, for the audio, an audio we're podcast, we're coming up on 100 episodes of the podcast, like just regular episodes. That doesn't count bonus episodes or Patreon stuff. 100 regular episodes. And Dylan still nods his head. Yes. Look, just go ahead and watch this episode on YouTube. If you're listening to this on your drive to work or whatever, turn it off. Just go go over to our YouTube page, pull it up. Look, what is it? What's the and Andrew will insert himself saying the the YouTube link here. Um, just go over there, pull it up, watch it on there. Yeah, if you don't believe me that Dylan nodded his head, that's what you can do. Uh, we also have a returning guest that's been absent but then made it for half an, half an episode but she's back now aubrey kimball i'm gonna say i have joe beat by about half an episode yeah like you, one and a half you did have to drop out of the last one you were on due to some technical difficulties but praying yeah. to the god of wi-fi and ethernet hopefully this one goes smoothly and we'll make it through the whole thing i do feel like you also need to watch this one just to see Joe's fabulous camera angle he's got going on this, yeah. this week. We were talking about that in the pre-show, if you listen to the uh, Patreon version of this. But yes, Joe is doing the sort of like dad webcam below looking up at the nose hair count kind of shot. So definitely worth it to go subscribe to our YouTube for that alone. <laughs> there you go, Joe. Do it for the meme. Uh, before we dive in, I just want to ask that if you enjoy our show, please tell your friends. It would really mean a lot. Also, go check out our website, levelplayingfieldgaming.com. From there, you can find links to our social media pages, YouTube channel, and our Patreon page. Speaking of Patreon, we now have an episode of each show, each Patreon-exclusive show that we offer. We have an episode of each in our normal feed. So if you want to get a taste for what those are, if you want to kind of see what we're doing over there, go check those out. They're there. They're free. They're live for everybody. Uh, the open mic podcast is the one where we just get on and we just all kind of talk about whatever. The episode that's live in our normal feed is us talking about fast food and drive through specifically and how long is too long before it's not worth it. And then the movie podcast that we also offer over there with Caleb and Aubrey, they were talking about Disney remakes and uh, Aubrey had some bad takes about Aladdin. So you can definitely go check those out. <laughs> She's shaking I, her head. <laughs> I got some wrong info about the quality of that movie. Well, did you wait? So are you saying you've changed your mind? No, Since she's saying no, it's a bad movie. Someone bad told movie. her I was told it's good. not that bad. It's a bad movie. Oh, OK, from I a thought technical you were saying standpoint like... and also from an entertainment standpoint, it's bad. That's gotcha. so that's so <laughs> wrong. It's just not true. Like, it's not a great movie, but it's a fun movie. It's but, at least solidly in the middle of the remakes. Yeah, it's a good old. It's well, one I mean, of the better remakes. Relative to hot garbage, it's you know lukewarm okay. garbage. I mean, look, I'm the harshest on Beauty and the Beast, which is the remake of like my favorite. That's a bad movie too. Yes. Yeah. That Lion is King is movie. also not good. Mulan is not good. Okay, don't spoil the whole episode. <laughs> yes, they just roast these <laughs> movies for an hour and a half. But if you want to go hear the whole thing, that's that's available to everybody. But on Patreon, you can go check out the back catalog and you can 
get all the future episodes that are going to come out. Uh, we also offer unedited versions of this show. We offer shout outs on our show. We offer access to our discord channel. So if any of that kind of stuff sounds interesting to you, if it sounds like a, a good value for your money, go check it out over there. The lowest tier is only $2, $2 a month. And you get both of those shows and access to our discord. So it's, it's really not that much of a, of a sacrifice from you, but it would really help us keep going and keep making content. And uh, it would show us that you appreciate what we're doing over here. So with Feels all really of, nice. yeah, it does feel good with all that being said, let's talk about some party games. So what is a party game? Game you play at a party or with a party. Okay. Yeah. That's a pretty good description, honestly. Yeah. Like, uh, I guess when I think of a party game, I, th I think of something that you can, like, pull out in a group that doesn't necessarily play video games and have a good time with. Yeah. Although, yeah. it can also be, you know, if your group does play video games, I feel like that expands what could be a party game. It's a game that yeah. you can play one session of and get a somewhat complete experience. It's not a game that you have to keep going back to. I feel yeah. like it should allow at least four players too. Yeah. Yeah. That is pretty key. It's not a very fun party game if it's just like you and one other person. Only. What if it's what if it's like um like a fighting game or something where you're passing off the controller based on wins or losses. I mean, yeah, tournament style is pretty decent too, but... That's converting a game to a party game? Not necessarily. Yeah. I wouldn't describe that, like, well, describe fighting games as party games. I would, like, Super Smash Brothers... Yes, that's I definitely a party game. <laughs> a party game. Mm -hmm. uh, something like um, Street Fighter or something like that. I think Mortal you Kombat. can play in a party setting, but I think that one's a little bit more tough to be a party game unless everyone's like invested in some sort of tournament. If, if yeah, you didn't need like multiple setups rolling at the same time or something like that mm -hmm. to make it a party yeah, game. Otherwise, players. it's just the people who like Street Fighter are off in a corner. Yeah. You're playing a Street Fighter at a party versus yeah. it being a party. Like super cuz like the one on the switch can have like how many people like eight right yeah and so like that's to me like a part like i mean you can have a big party but like if you can have up to eight people messing around in, in super smash brothers like that's a party game well and smash brothers adds all the crazy randomization and items mm -hmm. and yeah, stuff that can handicap and make it a little more accessible to casual players. Yeah, it makes it mm -hmm. fun and just wacky and crazy for everybody as opposed to like Mortal Kombat where it's like, if you're good at this game, you're never giving up your controller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and like if someone's like, oh yeah, come over, we're going to party, we're going to play games, like we're going to play Street Fighters. And we're like, oh, is this like, we need like a structured tournament thing? Mm -hmm. Are we going to have multiple setups? Versus, like, we'll play some Smash Brothers and Mario Party and stuff. That feels mm -hmm. more. Of course, if the game is the main attraction, then. Yeah. It's a little different. Yeah. And I feel like it depends, too, on, like, the time frame. Like, uh, Smash Brothers or um, something like that, where it's, you know, you can set it to have, like, we're talking three to five minutes tops per round or something like that mm -hmm. versus um, like Mario party. I definitely think is a, is a party game, but that one's a little bit more like that's like come over and play Mario party. That's what yeah. we're doing. <laughs> yeah. And if you're, if you don't have more than four people, that's great. If you have more than four people, then it's like, okay, well we're going to be doing 10 terms, which is going to take us at least 45 minutes. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. you know, I hope you enjoy watching this. So, um, which it can, I mean, it can be fun, but yeah, yeah, those are good answers. Um, everything we've mentioned so far, with the exception of fighting games, have been Nintendo games. <laughs> they they do make a lot of party games. They do tend to focus on. Uh, 
They seem were to you... have shifted their focus to more family content. Yeah. Stuff the whole family can enjoy versus. Well, and I freak were you talking about it, Aubrey, a few episodes ago about how they focus too on like couch co-op versus like a lot of the other. I feel like they're one of the few studios that or like companies or whatever that does focus on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. The console comes with two controllers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They also make good party games. Yeah. Which is a key distinction. Like we played Mario Mm -hmm. golf the other night after wrapping up that D and D session, Mm -hmm. we're all feeling pretty good, pretty silly. And that moment where what Delaney had used her special, we didn't fully understand what it did. And then Mm -hmm. what it did was make our putts just like veer off wildly in the wrong direction. But we didn't know that when Dylan putted and his ball just like took a sharp hook to the right. And he was like freaking out, wondering why that happened. And I just, I just like busted a gut laughing because it (laughs) it was just, it was so funny and unexpected. And Dylan's reaction was so perfect. Like Nintendo is good at those moments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just the silly, wacky. And if you really, if we really wanted to take Mario golf seriously, if we were like very Mm -hmm. being competitive about it, like, it can be frustrating, especially with the stuff that Mario Party does at the end where it's like, here's just some random BS stars. Oh, you were in the lead. Sorry. But for just those casual, silly kind of relaxing, cut loose, you just want to laugh gaming sessions. I think they really do have something special over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like when I was prepping for this episode a little bit and I pulled up just like a Wikipedia page of like quote unquote party games for what it's worth. Like most of the list was like Nintendo properties, Nintendo party games. Like Mm -hmm. there are other games on there that are considered party games. Um, And I don't think that I'm, I'm not claiming that the random list on Wikipedia was an exhaustive list, but um, like a lot more of Nintendo's games seem to be able to be party games than, you know, like Xbox. I, th- I think about like growing up, what we play on Xbox that was like a party game, like pretty much Rock Band, maybe a little bit of Guitar Hero could be considered party game. But like most of what we played at parties was like Halo or Left 4 Dead, um, yeah, which was still a fun time to like, you know, I, I do. I mean, those think are both in- those both fall into the party game camp. Yeah. Like you like, can sit down having never played halo Mm -hmm. and play like custom matches at a party and yeah walk away and be fine yeah like i I do think those can be party games but i also think that the like mass appeal is not there like it is with some of the like jackbox or um like mario parties or those kind of things you know um jackbox is a is a good i knew it was going to come up at some point but Mm -hmm. Jackbox, like that is their whole shtick. Mm-hmm. Everybody can play. All you need is a phone. Everybody has a phone. Like they want to be as accessible as possible and they want to be like onboard you as simply as possible. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's no like, like, I guess the issue with something like a fighting game or something like Halo is it requires sort of like a video game literacy that not everybody has, you know, like we all have it because we've been playing video games for years and years and years. And so we instinctively kind of know at this point how to like walk around in a first person game and shoot. Um, But like a Jackbox game, it's just like, Hey, do you know how to use your phone? Like you can play this game. Yeah. I think they've definitely, they've cut out a nice slice of the market for themselves. And I, I don't want to say they've perfected their formula because mm-hmm. they're some of their games are obviously better than others, but I do appreciate that they try different things, but mm-hmm. they're very unique in the gaming space. And I definitely, I appreciate what they do. Cause it's like, that tends to be our go-to kind of at the end of the night. Like, well, mm-hmm. what, what do we want to do now? What are we, what are we going to do now? We've wrapped up this thing that was kind of the, our main plan. <laughs> What do we want to do at this point? Oh, why not play some Jackbox? Yeah. yeah. And typically their games 
uh, can support up to like six or eight players too, which for our group, which is a little bit bigger than four, um, tends to work out nicely. And there is plenty of variety with Jackbox. If you're leaning more towards trivia, you're leaning more mm -hmm. ad lib kind of improv, you're leaning more quick reaction kind of stuff or art stuff or whatever. Like there's there's something for every mood. Mm -hmm. I do think that it's about time for Jackbox to do either a greatest hits or like let you bundle all the games under one banner <laughs> so you're not like yeah. quitting out of jackbox party bag one to yeah. jump to party bag five <laughs> like yeah if if there was ever a game that needed to adopt a live service like uh battle pass or like expansion pass system i feel like it's jackbox like just launch your jackbox app Every time they come out with a new game, it's just an expansion. And you pay like your 10 bucks or whatever, your 15 bucks, and you get access to like the five new games for the year. Yeah. Like, yeah, that'd, that'd be, be perfect. Great. Cause it is like, I think I have like six tiles on my Xbox <laughs> dedicated mm -hmm. to Jackbox games. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you have to remember, like, you have to at this point think through, like, well, which. Like, I know we want to play this game, but which one is it in? Like, is this a, a right. Jackbox 4? Is this a Jackbox 6? Like, what, where is this? And you've got duplicates at this point, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't know Jack was in the first game, but then they, like, redid it later. Mm -hmm. You've got, like, three Fibbages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, you probably want to, or you want to probably okay. play the most recent version because it's usually mm -hmm. the best. So there's some redundancy there that if they just like created a, a platform, you know, they could mm -hmm. just kind of thin that out a little bit. Yeah. So what, um, you mentioned rock band Dylan, mm -hmm. because I think that the next kind of, jumping off point i had was like what are some of the party games like when we think party games what comes to mind and that was going to mm -hmm. be mine because mm -hmm. rock band has always been that kind of staple yeah for our group and for me like that's mm -hmm. probably my favorite party game um yeah just being just enjoying music like I do and then enjoying that game and the like mm -hmm. slightly competitive nature, but it's also kind of like golf where you're trying to beat your own score, but mm -hmm. then you also want your team to do well because if they don't, you're going to lose the song Yeah, well, in, in more modern ones, you know, they have like no fail and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But yeah, sometimes your drummer just can't hit the, the part on learn to fly. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, uh... <laughs> and then sometimes you, uh, revisit that song a few years later and you're, the drummer destroys the guy talking crap <laughs> you almost failed out of the song i want the i want the people to know that you almost failed out like you didn't and you did have a higher score but like you did almost fail out i don't think end. so that's not how i remember it <laughs> i seem of to remember not. having the highest score though yeah well, that's true. i mean yeah obviously but <laughs> Yeah, I w there's just such pleasant memories associated mm -hmm. with that game. I put on uh, classic rock for a patient in the gym today while he was working out, and the first song that came up was Four Play Long Time by Boston. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. traditional just, just, like, closing song. Yeah, it just always puts me back to being like 15 at your parents' place, Dylan. Mm -hmm. We've been playing rock band all day long. Mm-hmm. We're going to end it with the eight minute song. Yep. You struggle through that first like intro section and then you get to the proper song. And you're like, okay, I can do it now. <laughs> like mm. That hard part's <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. And we just have to get through the three guitar solos. Yeah. Well, and it's one of those two that like, even if you're not playing the game, like you're still getting to like watch the, you know, the screen, which is kind of set up as like a little performance. You're still getting to listen to the music. Like, when we were playing it at my parents' house and we had it up loud so that we could hear it and whatever, like they didn't mind because like it was good music 
you know, like it's not, you know, like they're listening to a bunch of like gunfire and halo. It's not like they're listening to like random Mario or like Nintendo BS in like a Mario game. Like it's, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's music and in jet, you know, even when they were trying to leave and we threw on an eight minute song, they were like, all right, well, we'll stick around. And yeah. They'd us. like stand there and watch us. <laughs> yeah. Like, Oh, you're actually pretty good at this. <laughs> yeah. I know. I've been practicing all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and with rock band four, they introduced, you can have multiple microphones with multiple tracks. So you can mm-hmm. play around with harmonies. Um, and then, like, you put on Bohemian Rhapsody and everybody in the room is singing along. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say when you were talking about other people in the room. Like, even if you're not playing, mm-hmm. you're still singing to some of these songs. You're still yeah. contributing. It doesn't matter, especially mm-hmm. if it's the end of the night. We've all had a few beers or whatever. It's like, yeah, as soon as Black Parade comes on, <laughs> your inner emo kid <laughs> comes out. You just can't help it. Yep. Yeah, it's it's probably one of the best party games out there. Like it's it's sad that it is a bit difficult to get your hands on like an actual setup at this point. So, yeah, 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 it's it's rough that for one, the cost of entry is kind of high Mm -hmm. for two. Yeah. At this point, which is what people were saying when Rock Band 4 came out, that's this. It was the same thing. People were like, we need a new one with new instruments and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the Rock Band 4 was like the last generation version but at this point yeah we are the diehard fans of that series would very much like some new equipment and Mm -hmm. you know an updated game but i don't know that the mainstream appeal Mm -hmm. is there at this point yeah or at least just like a third party making like a new drum set or a new like guitar or something that is decent and affordable you know because like i still have a lot of my stuff at my parents house somewhere but like the guitar is from rock band one yeah and the uh the drum like has metal plates like screwed to fix the the kick pedal because the kick pedal got snapped in half um (laughs) after years and years and years of use so like yeah um you know like it's it'd be nice to to have newer versions of of that kind of stuff because the company that made the equipment for at least rock band 4 i don't know if all of them but it was mad cats and Mm -hmm. they've gone out of business so it was like there's Mm -hmm. there's really nothing right now you have to kind of ebay equipment and it's Mm -hmm. expensive at this point Yeah. yeah you know it's a a fantastic win phil spencer since you're out there listening buy the rights to rock band and just pump money into that put it out xbox exclusive come on xbox and pc i guess you know yeah just they, buy just do harmonics it. i mean but they could buy activision if they wanted to they could buy so. <laughs> <laughs> and and get it they could also just see if they wanted to sell harmonics you know but it, save the day xbox that's all i'm saying Joe, you have any thoughts on Rock Band or any other party games that come to mind? Uh, you guys have neglected to mention like the entire wealth of PC indie games that mm. fill the party game niche. Which you know, because I mean, you guys think party games, and this like I was your immediate <laughs> thought is like, oh, like a bunch of people in like you know your parents' living room, like that kind of game, mm. but more like as much have the as much of if not more of my party game experience is like 10 people in a discord call Mm -hmm. and you need something to play yeah you know you've got yeah social deduction games you've got just say say among us (laughs) now i was thinking like before among Um. us was Gold, as big a thing which you had well you had um i guess gary's mod was the place for like social deduction games yeah. or mm. is it town of salem um, yeah you know prop hunt like mm-hmm. 
that 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 really like games that you could not necessarily dedicated party games but games you could mod to be party games Mm -hmm. and so you'd have like 10 people on a call all play in that or play in there's there's a website out there that runs cards against humanity and i don't Mm -hmm. know the exact like legal specifics of all that but um, (laughs) yeah to know if like i mean it's a well uh, it's well known enough if they're not legal that they should have been shut down by now and i think technically cards is like an open game like how Mm -hmm. the the base rule set of 5e is open Mm um so yeah not, not entirely sure how that works but that yeah that's also like another big part of like party games at least to me is like Mm -hmm. you need something that 10 people can all play together yeah like your your discord group or something you've got enough people on and you all you're all trying to play something you know like Mm -hmm. back in the day when we would play gta we'd all get on Mm -hmm. together yeah if there's like eight of us on well we're all racing all night Mm -hmm. and like back then that was our our party game was like okay racing in gta yeah. But like on the PC guy on the PC side, because of mods, it's like, oh, if we didn't want to race, we would have like a, a bigger range of options of like, oh well, let's go play Trouble in Terrace Town or let's mm-hmm. go play um I'm trying to think of another like good example of modded party games. Um nothing's coming to mind. Also, a dog broke into my room. <laughs> <laughs> a dog or a polar bear? Uh, no, a dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, the PC thing. That's, mm. that's a, a good point. Yeah, it's like well, when, I, you, when you mentioned that, I wanted to, you know, play the role of Dylan and be like, ah, yes, my favorite party game memories, all crouched around my computer desk, sharing a mouse. But no, watching someone play Stronghold <laughs> Crusader. You, you do make too. a good point. Like, mm. I mean, especially last year when we were all kind of isolated and whatever excuse you <laughs> we were doing a lot of social visual <laughs> visual podcast today but oh, yeah, yeah no you got to check out the youtube video but yeah we yeah. did like phasmophobia mm-hmm. among us we played mm-hmm. some board games online like we did a lot of that kind of yeah mm-hmm. online pc more just something to do while you're hanging out as opposed mm-hmm. to actually like oh we're really focusing we really care about this game a whole lot yeah. you know mm-hmm. yeah like it's more so just like like i, I, I don't want to say like the division two was like a party game but like it was more of like a we're just gonna like hang out tonight and we're gonna do it in the division two and like we're mm-hmm. gonna do some stuff in it that yeah um, i feel like that one's a bit of a stretch but something that's like s- sort of similar to that of like hey we're all gonna be on you know discord or we're all going to be on xbox or whatever that's a good like a good question like where where does the line where is the line between just multiplayer gaming and a party game because yeah i mean dylan you and i we've been using soul games like Mm -hmm. just as a way to kind of hang out and talk and just Mm -hmm. you know just chill out on a sunday afternoon that's not a traditional party game. Uh, you know, like you said, me, you and Joe, we, we did the division. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had our whole outriders thing that we did, mm-hmm. but at what point, what makes it a party game versus just low like, barrier of entry, like mm-hmm. dark souls, outriders. Those are games that aren't just like, Oh, Hey, some of us are getting on. Do you want to join in? Oh yeah, sure. Let me just, go buy Dark Souls 3, download it real quick, get through the tutorial, um, get to the point where I can enjoy other people's worlds. Oh, wait, you guys are like half through the game? Okay, well, shoot, what do we do now? Mm-hmm. Party game is like, you know, oh, hey, you want to play Among Us? Just, it, you know, download it on your phone, or it's like $3 on Steam. Yeah. Okay, boom. So you yeah. think the in, barrier, but- to, barrier to entry and like ease of access is like the main defining thing how aggressive is the campaign yeah that that that's where i would make the distinction that, yeah. I, I mean i i i would agree with that I, I i i buy that yeah i think it for me it it really depends on how i'm defining party like if i'm defining party like if it's gonna like if it's you guys 
than to me pretty much anything that more than or that four or more people can play is like a party game right because at that like you guys all are familiar enough with video games that it's like we can kind of just do whatever and like, with each other like mm-hmm. we're all kind of like we're just kind of in tune with each other we can play some dumb werewolf game where we're all yeah. voice acting characters and be like yeah this might not fly with every group but like it, it wasn't a people... werewolf game it was a competitive dating sim is what yeah. you're referring to <laughs> whatever <laughs> Monster my point is, High. It was so not, good. That was so not much my fun. My main cup of tea, but like you knew that with the group that you were in, like, yeah, we can try this. We can give it a shot. We'll get through mm-hmm. it. Some people won't love it, but some people like, it. like you know, it, it was going to be a good evening. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think where your head is, like, okay, if I'm with my girlfriend's yeah. family or something, and we're trying to find something to do, we might be mm-hmm. a little bit more selective. Yeah, like I, I think about like times where i've had like friends over up here um that are not really in the video game space and then it was very much like we're not going to be playing like halo we're not gonna like we probably could have done a mario kart or something like that but it's like we we played jackbox you know like if if parents are involved we're probably leaning towards like a jackbox or a a rock band type of situation Mm -hmm. um i think to like some of the bigger parties we've had at like your house and stuff where it's like in that large of a mix of people like we're probably gravitating more towards like a super casual super casual type of thing versus something a little bit more serious um but i agree with joe you know like if you're in a discord with a you know bunch of people that are familiar with video games it's like yeah why limit yourself like pretty much anything with a uh, that doesn't take a lot of brain power to play and you can just kind of goof around and have fun and it, like it's more about the goofing around and having fun than it is about like the game itself you know um so let me ask this question is the nintendo wii the best party console yeah i mean even my parents were super into wii sports (laughs) and so i i maybe having to lean towards a yes surprisingly (laughs) Wii sports we resort mario and sonic at the olympic games mario kart where you actually did what every like every person that doesn't understand video games tries to do where they're holding their controller and they're like turning and leaning with the, with the controller mm. like that actually did something <laughs> in the Wii version of Mario Kart. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh so yeah. There's we've a Mario party it. for the Wii. Mhm. Yeah. Just buy a Wii. And, and the Wii had backwards compatibility with the GameCube. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's yeah. there's a lot you can do with it. Had. You could get Guitar Hero on it too, right? You guys had Guitar Hero on the Wii. How I played pretty much all of my Guitar Hero was You would through put a Wii. your Wii controller in the guitar controller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was fantastic. It Very worked. Great. I love those controllers. Yeah. Yeah. The Wii was quite a. I didn't really expect us to get here with the conversation, but like thinking about it that was like the one place where the motion control gimmick like really shined like Mm -hmm. skyward sword just released today it's like oh here's a hardcore zelda game here's like this is for the actual video game fans and what does everybody talk about that game the motion controls why Mm -hmm. does it have them it would be better without them blah 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 so for full on like committed gamers no maybe the the gimmick of the motion control wasn't necessarily what people were looking for or hoping for especially in retrospect but you can't deny and uh, like you obviously can't deny just based on numbers of how many mm-hmm. Wii's were sold but like the motion controls for the casual gamer and for the party and for the kids and for the social gamer and for just those fun like oh look i'm bowling in my living room like mm-hmm. they, they really they found something special there yeah well and where i work in a nursing home they have a wii yeah, we had a resident who would just sit there for hours and just play Wii bowling, mm-hmm. walk past the activity room, hear the sound of the pins getting knocked over, strike. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you had it perfectly lined up, so you got to strike every time. But that's they, gonna be me. They and still them. make just dance for the Wii. They don't yeah. anymore, but up until like 
a year or two ago they did. I think mm-hmm. the final one just came out because I remember hearing about that. But yeah, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty crazy. Right. Instead of a switch with an OLED screen, like maybe like brush up the Wii and re-release up. Like you know, you've they've done the SNES. Do a Wii collection. Do a Wii. Joe, you you mentioned Just Dance, and that's not something that this group cares about or does but talk about like a successful party game mm-hmm. like the just dance franchise like every time i see their promotions or their commercials or like the ubisoft forward thing where they had that artist on there promoting it and i was just like cringing through the whole thing but mm-hmm. like there is a huge market for that game mm-hmm. like you said they were making a version of it for the nintendo wii up until just recently. Yeah. Which means someone crunched the numbers and was like, <laughs> it's worth it to continue to make this Wii version. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. If you've ever been to any youth targeted event and there's a Wii <laughs> there, it's got just dance on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Youth targeted. You're making me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not us anymore. I'm like, what was the last time I went to a youth targeted event? <laughs> don't, don't ask yourself that question. Mm-hmm. Oh God. <laughs> but yeah, just dance. That's definitely like like I said, not something that we really are into, but definitely something you can't deny. And you and mm-hmm. it's in like every arcade, barcade, that kind of thing too. They have the whole mm-hmm. just dance with the actual dance pad thing too. So Yeah. Saying arcade dance, makes me dance think about. Oh, sorry. Oh no, I was just mentioning Dance Dance Revolution. Mm, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say like you bringing up arcades makes me think about like I mean there's pretty much everything in an arcade is kind of like a party game. Um, because your whole point is kind of like oh okay like let's jump into the you know like killer queen or something like mm-hmm. that where it's just like you know let's get you know four to eight people together and like let's play killer queen and um even like even a fighting game i think would probably be more of a party game in an arcade or a bar or something like that than versus like just at home sitting around you know yeah because yeah. it feels like a better setting to like mm-hmm. gather around the cabinet with a drink and watch somebody do something yeah or like a someone's home Mm-hmm. The uh, kind of brawlers or running guns like Metal Slug and stuff like that, where it's like, even if you're not playing, you're kind of rooting for whoever is playing because you know that mm-hmm. money's on the line. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like it is a, it is a pretty cool experience. So yeah. Yeah. Arcades are a whole nother ball of wax. And we had Joe on with the indie arcade wave. And I do mm-hmm. think that, I mean, arcades thrive on social gaming like yeah i'm sure you get diehards in there that are just like oh i love this game and i want to come play it and see how far i can get but i don't think that's the most common thing anymore these days Mm -hmm. now it's like hey group of us what are we going to do tonight let's go drink a few beers and go play some kind of retro Mm -hmm. arcade games and go check out what's new on the scene and Mm -hmm. so that I definitely do think that's an interesting angle for the, the party thing. It's not necessarily the same as like like you said, sitting at home on your couch and just hanging out, but mm-hmm. it is kind of a different type of party. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're all fans of party games, I'm assuming. We're all big fans of those games. Yeah. I mean who In- isn't? Yeah, like in a party context, yeah. Like, I I guess that's the big question. Like, would you play what you consider to be a party game outside of, like, a party regularly? Like, I know there's exceptions. I know Andrew played a ton of uh, rock band himself. Um, Depends on the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just the one game. How much much of your experience is wrapped up in interaction with other people mm-hmm. and how much is like you interact with the game so mario kart rock mm-hmm. band you can play those solo because yeah. that's mostly you in the game mario party though <laughs> jackbox 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jackbox. No, I don't think Jackbox will let you start by yourself. <laughs> I don't think you can play that yeah. solo. Yeah. I think Mario you can Party. play Don't Know Jack solo. And that's one of it. the most depressing yeah. things I've ever heard. It's like, yeah, you could play Mario Party. <laughs> Voting for your solo. own quiplash. Right. <laughs> You just have two phones and you're just like, oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm hilarious. Yeah. I played uh, Monster Prom mm-hmm. by myself before I... I'm sorry. Actually, like the first episode I was it's on. It's such a good game. <laughs> it's such I, a good game. <laughs> Dylan's a <Andrews>. the, <laughs> the first ever episode of Level Playing Field when we did the What Have You Been Playing section, Monster Prom. You can go back and listen. Like that's mm-hmm. what I one of the games I had been playing. Um Mario Party. I think you need at least one other person. It's probably not fun against the bots. Like you mm-hmm. you're a certain kind of person if you're like, I'm gonna figure out how to win against the super hard bots. Mm-hmm. You can do it. Don't know why, but you can. But then that being said, when I got my switch and I got Mario Party and I Delaney and I spent an entire weekend just unlocking every single thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it depends too on what the game offers. Because like, okay, Mario Party, that's designed to be played with a group or at least another person. Mm-hmm. But like, say, you know, Mario Kart, you want to unlock the gear, you want to unlock mm-hmm. the carts, you want to unlock the tracks. Mario um, Golf, there's a whole little like campaign thing you can do to unlock more of the courses and stuff there's there's reasons to play that solo super Mm -hmm. smash brothers like we brought that up in the beginning but that has a ton of stuff you can do by yourself unlocking Mm -hmm. characters playing through classic Mm -hmm. mode as each character playing through the adventure mode like Mm -hmm. for me rock band rock band was just something i enjoyed i didn't really Mm -hmm. care too much about like the campaign and stuff I would just, I just loved putting on a set of my favorite songs and drumming to them. And so mm-hmm. that was just a fun Saturday afternoon for me for a long time. But mm-hmm. I will say that in general, if I'm by myself, I'm trying to get immersed in something a little deeper, mm-hmm. especially if I have a big block of time. But I do think that there are those f- games that kind of straddle the line between party and like oh this is actually a, a meaningful solo experience i don't mm-hmm. think that they're that that's the standard like you're not going to play among us by yourself you're not going to play <laughs> um you know certain games like that but there are games where you can do both mm-hmm. yeah i you wouldn't play have? phasmophobia by myself but that's because i'm a titty baby i was gonna say i wouldn't <laughs> I barely want to play that game with people, but <laughs> playing that game solo, I would just, yeah, I would never leave the truck. So it's mm-hmm. not very fun. And like as soon as everybody <laughs> else has died, I'm like, all right, man, we're leaving. Everybody yeah. take a guess. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Someone's yep. got to preserve their gear. So I guess that brings up like a good, you know, like uh, down here, I threw like, do we prefer like our party games in person or online? And I know we've kind of talked about both, but like, is there ever a, a a thing where you want to play against randoms as a party game, like Never. just random people? Because like Never technically, ever. you can play Among Us solo and jump into a random lobby. Mm, is nope. that fun for anybody? I don't know. I don't think no. so. Miserable experience. Yeah, I don't, that's not me. Uh, Mm -hmm. I remember one of my first, like, earliest Xbox 360 rando experiences was Left 4 Dead 2. They had Mm -hmm. the, like, zombie versus humans mode or whatever. And I jumped into the zombie, or I jumped into that mode and I got on the zombie team. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what I was doing. And I was running around and there was a point where like basically our whole team had wiped except mm-hmm. for me and I could just hear the other people on mic like saying my name and like what I needed to do and stuff and was just like uh, this is this is too much I don't know what I'm supposed to do I just jumped in to like try this out I didn't realize I was going to be here with other people mm-hmm. and so I dropped it and I never played that mode again and it was similar with me with WoW when I played I, I hated doing instances and dungeons mm-hmm. and stuff as a solo person because I always felt so much more pressure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I only ever ran dungeons with people in our guild mm-hmm. in WoW. And then by the time Mists came out, most of our guild had kind of moved on. I didn't really know anyone. Um, but I was just going through and systematically doing all of the quests uh, in Mists of Pandaria. Because that's how I played. I did the quests. Mm-hmm. And there were a couple quest lines that you had to go into the dungeon to do. And so I queued up into an instance. I didn't spec my warlock any kind of way. Mm -hmm. I was like, this looks like fun. That looks like fun. This looks like fun. So then I drop in. I'm like, look, I'm DPS. I like, I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. I just have to drop damage. And I'm like, warlock, drop the buff and do this and do that. And then there's some guy who's like, are you a girl in real life? What's your name? What's your number? It's like, (laughs) <laughs> and then we wiped like four times mm. and like warlock why aren't you dropping a buff i'm like i don't know what you're talking about like there's pandas and dragons and i'm running around listening to interesting stories like mm-hmm. i don't play games how a majority of hardcore people play games how joe plays them and anytime i run into a hardcore person i'm like look we're gonna have a bad time <laughs> i'm not what you yeah. want in the teammate. <laughs> so, like you either need to chill out and take what you get or one of us needs to requeue. Mm-hmm. but yeah so yeah and just hearing about online interactions and seeing stuff even the like poning this guy who was a total jerk to me kind of it it's like i'm not good enough at video games for that mm-hmm. i don't want to be so just online in general nah. yeah yeah I, th- I think that the online versus local, like that's situational for me. Mm-hmm. Like there are times when I'd I'd rather play Dark Souls with you online or play a game mm-hmm. with people online because then it's like, okay, I'm hopping off for the night, bye, and I don't have to like kick you out of my house kind of thing. Yeah. But you guys have is, no problem kicking people out of your house though. No, I I yeah. don't. But it is <laughs> it is also more like when I'm playing with other people, I want it to be my people. Like very rarely yeah. am I like, oh, I want to just jump into this random Call of Duty lobby with my mic hot and be like, yo guys, what's up? Who in here is older than 13? Like it just that that doesn't yeah. happen. I if if I'm doing a multiplayer thing, whether it's local or co-op, it's like I want it to be us or mm. you know maybe people that we've met through even through this like you know even yeah. if it's like the geek catch-up guys or whatever like yeah but it's people we know mm-hmm. yeah i don't want to just i'm not that gamer that just wants to jump in and start making friends online i guess mm-hmm. which i don't know if <laughs> joe if you like making friends online i have a few yeah yeah i'm not like uh you know I'm We're not his only it. Discord server. Not, I'm not a uh, you well, one know, of his least trafficked, probably. Gonna, uh, you guys are like top three. Oh wow, top I'm on five. a hundred, a uh, top five. <laughs> it's dropping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, uh, it's dropping. <laughs> it depends on the day. Uh, but I'm not the kind of guy who's usually gonna like try to keep talking to somebody in a random lobby mm-hmm. and then like add in my friends list. But mm-hmm. yeah, I'll join like communities and then get to know like the persistent people in those spaces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you play party games, do you prefer to do it locally online? And do you prefer, like, do you prefer, you, you, I'm assuming would rather just run with your squad or your crew or your friends as opposed to like jump in and try to make it work with whoever you happen to. Oh, no, yeah. I much prefer like with with my friends. Mm-hmm. I don't like even even if it's like you know a semi public Discord server where they're like, "Hey, we're gonna run Among Us," and you look at the names list and you're like, "I technically have interacted with all those names before, but I I don't actually know any of these people. Like mm-hmm. that's right. not my cup of tea. It's like I want to you know know who I'm playing with." So when we play games, when we play party games or even multiplayer games, do we, what's the split here between competing versus more casual, just kind of party experiences? I know Joe is, he's competitive. He's a competition guy. 
you you're on record as saying yeah that. yeah the items in smash brothers shouldn't be turned on <laughs> what <laughs> Why do you hate fun? <laughs> Why do you play Smash Brothers then? Like just I mean, play can, any other have, fighting game. Some items are allowed. Specifically, the items I detest are final the final smash orb and the assist trophy. What if Even the final smash fun. is set to because in my smash I have it set to like a meter that builds over time. And so everybody just gets theirs. That's at a just, point that system's the- fine for like party play okay like that's okay no when it when it was it was just that orb that's like mm-hmm. whoever gets the breaking hit on it gets the smash that's the traditional not yeah. not a fan of that and then pokeballs i are usually okay are on thin fucking ice. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to put it what it's about the trophies? purple ones that are going to be like no. an epic Pokemon? if it's, it's trophies are are enabled just not having a good time but the, the, you can't get the Rathalos from Monster Hunter unless it's it's only in the Sis Trophy, Joe. Uh, you what do you know, expect me Rathalos to do? Rathalos doesn't need to be in Smash Brothers. That's false. That's <laughs> here we go. False. Here we go. Here's the content Every, right here. Uh, all video games should be in Smash Brothers. Well, I, okay. I draw like like other items. There's like in you know a little bit of skill, a little bit of like interaction with it the pokeballs get a pass just because they're typically so low impact and like half of them suck anyways but you know the the assist trophies it's like oh i just picked up this item that's gonna kick everybody's ass and i don't have to do like a thing i just i get to you know do 80 percent to everybody because i picked up an item See, I fully just embrace the chaos. Like that's that's that that's is that's game. up there with like blue shell territory. What's wrong with blue shell? Blue shell is the worst. <laughs> they call that embraos, Dylan. <sighs> Embracing chaos. Now, Aubrey, mm. I know that you would much more prefer the casual, laid back. One hundred percent. I thoroughly enjoyed Monster Prom. I appreciated how none of us were really looking to sabotage each other, even when the opportunity briefly arose. (laughs) Um, Rock band. Mm -hmm. Like the level of competition I like is like Jackbox, like low stakes stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody's like frenetic action or mashing a button or whatever. It's like, you mean, you competitive but in a chill way yeah or like a mario party where like it is somewhat competitive there can't you like you can steal people stars but then like the end of the game they just randomly give out three extra stars for no reason so like even if, if you had the did right well, ally the hell does that mean <laughs> mario party is like extremely competitive and then at the end, you realize it was all for nothing. Like, I played through that game, and I'm like, die hard, want to get you, want to pull one over on you. I hate when you screw me over. And then at the end, Toad's just like, and here, the computer gets three stars and wins. And it's like, why did I pay $60 for this garbage? <laughs> Dylan, where do you fall on this spectrum? If I'm playing a party game, I generally like it to be a little bit more laid back or like, um like we were talking about a little bit ago about like halo um you know like i'm fine with halo like if we're all on a team and fighting someone else like i don't want to be competing against the people in my party really um or if if it is it's like aubrey where it's low stakes like no all in good fun no busy. yeah no one's gonna be like how dare you like right. um, stop grabbing the freaking trophies exactly like that's um that just sucks the fun out of it um Mm. so for me anyway um so like left for dead one of my Mm -hmm. favorite co-op experiences is having like with like the two tv set up oh yeah full squad yeah yep getting all four of us together because it's like it's your squad against the world Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of a ridiculous game too oh Yeah. yeah So, yeah, like, no. yeah, you wipe, but it's still fun. Whereas, like, if you were to try to play that online, 
Mm-hmm. And you got someone who's like, no, I'm trying to crit this and score what like like whatever. It's like, okay. Yeah. Why are you doing this online? Well, come October, we can all uh relive our excited. nostalgia with Back for Blood because it's on Game Pass. So we have no reason Fingers crossed. not to play it. Well, yeah, it could get delayed, but I'm excited for it to get me 25 points in my fantasy critic. 25. Obviously. It's what? That's just like the 80s, right? 85? Or is that in the 90s? No, that, the, the 90s. You have to break 90. That oh, would wow. be a 92. Jeez. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> we'll if it's going to get a 92. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful. All right, Joe. First game, when you hear the words party game that pops in your head. Mario Party. Dylan. Uh, rock Band. <laughs> I should have gone first. Aubrey. Yeah, she should have. Rock band. <laughs> oh, so we're just all rock band. Yeah. <laughs> the three music nerds. Yeah. I mean, rock band definitely takes it, but also we've talked about them a lot, but I think super smash brothers and Jackbox are also mm-hmm. like games that jump to my mind pretty, pretty quickly as well. Sure. Yeah. But like probably seven to eight out of 10, we're having a party. We've had a few drinks, most everybody's left and it's kind of just the the after party we're not quite ready to go to bed yet there's a handful of stragglers we tend to pull out rock band yeah oh yeah rock band is like this cruise go-to we love that um well do do you guys have anything else you want to say shout out get off your chest on this topic before we move into dylan's extravagant game that i can't wait to check out (laughs) No, it's been that game's been quite sold. I'm very curious. All right, then with that, let's go ahead and move into our closing game for this episode. Okay, so the game is called Don't Be a Party Pooper, <laughs> which is both the title of the game and your instructions, guys. All right. Well, where poopers. did you source your results from? <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome, podcasters. After discussing our topic today, I knew exactly what we needed to play. While some of you may say this is lame, if you believe hard enough, it's our fun closing game. Oh, my God. <laughs> With your imagination and some creative liberties, we'll compete in some mini games from across the series. Uh, because this is Mario, it will be bizarre. There are a ton of ways that you'll earn a star. You brought whoever it has the most stars at the end will be crowned the victor, and as the level playing field party star, they'll ascend. So be a trooper, not a party pooper. And you can put, you know, some little Mario party sound effects. Maybe Toad doing wow. his little, yeah. <laughs> You know, throw, throw all that in and post. The only um, thing that would make this better, Dylan, is if you had Delaney here to read it. If I had a little... Yeah, I mean, yes, that's fair. <laughs> and she was just like, I don't understand this. This is stupid. I'm not reading this. <laughs> so. P.T. Barnum over here with his showmanship. So. I have... Eight-ish different mini-games that we will be partaking in Hmm. Um, and you'll be getting points for uh, the order that you finish if you finish you know first uh, you get five points if you finish second you get three points if you finish last you get one point are you keeping up with that or do you need I yeah I will be keeping up with everything on my own all Um, right Dylan's the man so uh Andrew. Yes. Give me a number between one and, or yeah, one and eight. Seven. All right. So the first game that we will be playing is Ah. Photo Finish, um, which is a game that I adapted from Mario Party 4. um, Linked in the chat. This is potentially a, a uh, like I said, a video-heavy podcast tonight. I guess so. So, um, so that 
link should bring you all to the official Nintendo website, um, which has a, if it loads correctly, uh, it should be a puzzle. Mm -hmm. I would like you all to, when I, I'm going to give you guys a countdown, um, three, two, and then one, and click the easy. We're going to go with the easy puzzle. Now, um, is this, can I share my screen or will that? Yeah, you can share can your they screen. Not see their, can they not see my screen? Uh, it should be the same puzzle for all of you. Okay, um, let me share for the video viewers here. So what you'll do is it'll shuffle it up into eight pieces. Um, and then when you complete it, you will, um, in our little chat on here, type that you were done. Um, and so that's how I'm going to keep track of who gets it done first. Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. There's mud, and I will, I will narrate it. Does anyone have any questions? This is this is where Toad is explaining the rules to you. There's traditionally a little practice round, so if you want to go ahead and like click it just to see how it goes, you can do a little bit of that. Um, let me know when everybody is ready. So I'm we're ready. hitting easy at the same time, and then we're putting a puzzle together. Correct. And then we're typing done in the chat. Correct. Or just type something in the chat. It doesn't have to be full full word you gotta get the key um, smash gotcha yeah you gotta you gotta get something in there um and whoever gets that in and hits enter or send or whatever first gets the you know first place point um all right so is everyone ready mm -hmm. sure all right three two one go oh god all right so they are all trying to piece together a Mario themed puzzle. Um, it's got Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Daisy. No, that's Peach. I know Mario. <laughs> I know oh, Mario. Andrew is, Andrew is really struggling. I'm mostly seeing his perspective here. Oh, he was, I thought he was struggling, but apparently he it, uh, he's first twice. He he's in the chat twice. <laughs> I didn't see the A go the first time, so I shot it again. <laughs> there it is. They're both there. Fa. Ooh, right. Really struggling, and I had what like a ten second lead. Yes. So Andrew Andrew finished significantly before. If you're uh, watching the YouTube video, go. you get to see me struggle through the, whatever Dylan's. I did mine in thirty eight. Um, did mine in thirty four. Oh, 10 seconds. Spot on. I knew. Yeah. Can I blame wow. my internet? You could. You could. Um, <laughs> so. I'm, I'm Historically shitty. Blame my <laughs> lack of mouse. Oh, no. <laughs> Just Is handicapped himself. Crack pad? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's hilarious. So. That is the first game. So it's pulling out. It's going back to the board, which we don't have because I'm not having you guys roll around a board. That would just take too long. If we ever do this in person, though, maybe. Um, so, oh my. Aubrey. Yes. Uh, three. Three. All right. So this is a game of my own creation. Um, it's not from a Mario Party specifically, but... There are multiple games in every single Mario Party that fall into this category. In this category, this, the title of this is called Button Spam. Oh, Lord. Um, so I'm going to give you guys like a, a countdown and then say go. And then you guys are going to, in the chat, um, like put your little cursor in there. You are going to alternate between P and Q. And you're going to hit as many of those as you can um, within five seconds and then hit enter when I say stop. And whoever has typed the most um, will get the <laughs> point. So I, I was just going to have you hit one button over and over again to really get the button spam, but you could just hold it down and it would go faster. So to keep everyone honest, we're going to alternate back and forth. Um, if, if it doesn't like alternate, like if, if you miss one or something like that, that's fine. It, it's just to keep you from like holding a button down, if that makes sense. So is everyone ready? Is everyone understand? Yep. All right. Three, two, one, go. Five, 
four, three, all those Q two, one, stop, and hit enter. Good luck. All Ooh. right. So Joe is the very clear winner. Um, I'm not going to count them up. I can see them on the screen. Um, he has like three and a half rows full of P's and Q's um, fully typed. Um, second place is Andrew. He has three full rows um, and then like two letters on the fourth row. And then Aubrey has almost three full rows. So she and Andrew are very, very close. Your window's smaller than mine because <laughs> you're <laughs> saying one more row entirely than I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But it does add up. It does add up. Yeah. All right. Joe, pick a number between one and eight. Uh, you can't pick seven. You can't pick three. One. One. <laughs> All right. This one is called Dash and Dine. It is from Super Mario Party. Um, mm. In this game, normally in Mario Party, you are given a list of ingredients and you have to make a sandwich. Um, for the purposes of this game, what I'm going to have you guys do is you are going to need to collect two things that are like whitish brown, one thing that is green and one thing that is reddish and make a sandwich <laughs> together. <laughs> and the first person to do so and come back and show it to me on the screen wins. And Wait, then what are the colors? Brown. Two, two, two things that are reddish colored. Um, one thing that is red, like a, a meat or a tomato or something like that. And one thing that is green, like a lettuce. So when I say I'm going to give you guys a countdown, you can use whatever you need to. But the, the first person that's back um, with their assembled sandwich um, will get the get the most points for this one. Is everyone ready? Does everyone understand the rules? <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. It's great podcasting. <laughs> like I said, this is going to be I tried to tell them at the beginning. This is going to be a very visual heavy podcast today, guys. Three, two, one, go. All right. Andrew and Aubrey are off. I think Joe is just going to take the L on this. That's what it seems like. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, as, uh, well, for one, I don't want to like just rummage through D's office. All right. All right. So Aubrey has brought a collection of books um together that is it and then andrew has brought his what is that an eevee a white claw a pokeball <laughs> and then i don't know what the thing on the bottom there is. it's dragon it's um, from monster hunter or dragon age i was something. gonna say that's a dragon age dragon <laughs> all right and then joe joe has taken the l um <laughs> he's in andrew and i's mother's office <laughs> that, that's fair that's fair um but so you know I could just reach over and grab like one of these baskets of yarn and i'm pretty sure like <laughs> but it's just like it's, it's there somewhere so i just want to i want to throw out the things you described for our sandwiches and feel like i get some points for creativity on my sandwich <laughs> i mean yeah i mean there, there was a white claw in the middle <laughs> there was a white claw in the middle there was that is uh... that is that is true um so all right um so currently the scores stand at andrew 11 joe with nine and then aubrey with um seven all right uh, so, <laughs> so that brings us back to Fourth andrew comic books yes Tasty. andrew uh, two two all right does everyone have access to scissors uh in a moment i can technically i'm yeah. mostly asking joe do you can I, you get access to scissors and a piece of paper oh and probably paper. all right so you, you're saying yes so we're gonna go ahead and do this game then uh um, wait 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 <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I say I can't. All right. 
you're at her desk, right? There's got to be. No, I'm in the there. I'm in the chair, like behind it. Oh. Uh, I would have to go into another room to get my scissors, but Same. well, that is part of the game. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> running um, with scissors. No, no, no running with scissors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll play it. We'll play a different game then. Um, so Andrew, pick again. Pick a pick another. I'm so curious what that was going to be. <laughs> so that one is going. It was Crazy Cutter, which is from the original Mario Party, where I was going to give you a video game related shape, such as a Goomba, and you were I going to have cut, to cut it, it out. out. And it was going to be like speed, but also who's looked most like a Goomba. But I, I didn't know Joe was not going to be in his apartment. I figured everybody at their own place would have access to like some scissors and some paper. So, uh, Tom, pick another five. All right. So this one is looking for love, which is from Super Mario Party. All right. Um so this is the one where you have to have your character look in a specific direction um, based on like where the heart is. Um, we're going to tweak it a little bit. Um, so I've got a deck of cards here with all four suits. Um, that was probably very <laughs> loud in the, the audio. <laughs> I'll fix it um, in post. <laughs> so we're going, we are going to... Not what I was expecting, no. <laughs> um, instead of looking, I'm going to have you type up, left, up, down, left, or right. Um, so up, I'm going to paste it into uh, the window here. So if it's a heart, you're going to type up. If it's a diamond, you're going to type left. <laughs> if it's a club, you're going to type down. And if it's a spade, you're going to type right. And we're really going to do this. Check out the YouTube version of this. <laughs> we're going to do this three times. Joe went on Dylan is minutes. really trying to get us to make sure he never has to do a game again. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is the most high like, right, effort right. game we've ever played. Googling random bullshit. I'm enjoying myself. Uh, so we'll we'll have to instead. Let's go to memorizing that uh, diamond equals left. It's yes. post. You just look at. It. Just look. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's there, but there's still like, okay, completing the brain circuit of like, okay, Dylan held up a, a club. What is that? Oh, that's, that's down. That's okay, what the game is. That's what the up. game in Mario Party is, is you have to like, okay, where is the heart? It's not always red. Which way do I need to make my character look? This is the same thing. This is the same thing. Okay. All right. How strict are we so, going to be about typos? Uh, as long as I can tell what it's supposed to be like. I guess technically you can just use the letter like U L D R uh, if that's easier, if that would be quicker. I feel like that goes better. Um, okay. So is everyone clear on the rules? Yeah. Yep. We're going to do this like best out of like first to three. So, all right. All right, so it was a club. Aubrey and Joe both got it. Andrew looked the wrong way. Andrew looked. Oh, I was like, yeah, diamonds. <laughs> comma. All Not right, and equals. Aubrey got it first. Or er, right. yeah, first of three though. All right, so diamond. Oh geez, I froze. All right. ah, I gotta scroll back up. <laughs> All oh, right, yeah. so everybody, everyone got it. Joe was the first. Um. All right. Spade. Damn, Joe. All right. Aubrey. Complaining first. about it going into it. <laughs> All well, right. We're about to we're about to scroll past like where I can <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still having to sit there like, wait, d d d that's the game. That's literally the game in Super Mario Party. I create I created something that Nintendo <laughs> also created and put out for $60. Good job, Dylan. Spade. Uh, Who was first? Jeez. <laughs> All right, Joe was first. All right, so it's Aubrey two, Joe two, Andrew zero. Diamonds. All right. Joe is the first to three. 
So Joe takes the win in that uh, that mini game. Whew. Good job, Joe. Yeah, Joe. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so that puts Joe at 14 points, Aubrey at 10 points, and Andrew at 12 points. All right. Uh, Aubrey, I think you're up to pick another game. What numbers remain? Uh, let's see. We have six and eight, four, and we have, yeah, four and six and eight. Four. All right. This game is another of, it's not really my own creation. This one is Taco Cat. Everyone is familiar with Taco oh, Cat, God. correct? Oh, no. So what Taco Cat is... It's a card game where you've got uh, a bunch of different animals and you you say like when you say taco cat, goat cheese, pizza, and when the picture on the card matches up with the word that you're saying that then you all slap the middle and whoever gets it last loses. Um, so we will be um, go go ahead and type in the channel slap. But don't don't hit send it. Okay, don't hit send it though. Wow. <laughs> uh, go ahead and type slap. Cue it up. Get it ready so that as soon as the match, you can go ahead and hit that enter button or hit that send button and send it. Is everyone clear on those rules? Mm -hmm. All right. Taco. Listeners, if you're not cat, he's displaying a car. Card. Goat. Cheese. Pizza. What do we do if it's the wild? Taco. All right. So Andrew was first. Um, it matched up. Andrew was first. Aubrey was second. Joe was third. So Gorilla and Narwhal. We're, and we're just going to ignore this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was All like, right. my instincts. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so that puts Andrew at 17, Aubrey at 13, and Joe at. Oh, we're only doing one round of that. Okay, cool. <laughs> yes, only one round. <laughs> These are mini games, mini. Okay. Um, okay. And so that Joe, you have the choice for the last two games. Um, you can choose six or well, before we get there, everyone, everyone give me a a number between one and eight. Seven. Eight. Three. Okay. This is why Dylan's the DM in our Dungeons and right. Dragons group. And then I Joe. Would have just done synonym roll again. I was going to do 20 questions. <laughs> uh, pick for the final game six or eight. Eight. All right. So this game is adapted from the original Mario Party. Uh, it's Memory Match. I don't know. Um, and so I have linked in the chat another. I don't know if you guys know this. Nintendo has a ton of like little games and stuff you can play on their website. So this one is like one of those memory games where it's like, you know, you've got a bunch of cards and you have to flip over, like you have to match, you get like the match the pairs. So you can only flip over like two at a time. Um, so we are going to do six pairs. Okay. It's that middle one. Um, and so you're going to be matching Nintendo characters. And then, like I said, first, you know, when you're finished, type something in the chat, send it, whoever gets it first. That's how we're going to keep track of who, who did it first. I guess this one probably times you too, but, um, it has so is every down at the bottom, like how many yeah. flips it takes you. Okay. Um, so is everyone ready? Yep. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. So Andrew is flipping cards furiously. Uh, he has not found a single match yet. Um, he has seen almost all the cards. Oh, he just matched Wario together. Uh, he found the two Warios. 
Um, I think at this point he's seen pretty much all the cards. He just matched Rosalina. Oh, wow. <laughs> Joe and Aubrey are both done. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, these, these have never been my strong suit. <laughs> all right. In 13 moves. What about you, Joe? Nine. Nine. All right. So, Joe... Joe even typed out like a whole word. I just went key smash. <laughs> Joe and then Aubrey and then Andrew. All right. So that leaves us. Uh, that is the last mini game. Um, and so that brings us to uh, Joe with 20 points. Um, Andrew with 18 and Aubrey with 16. But wow. that said, that's not how Mario Party scores. You get scores based <laughs> on your stars. Bonus. Um, and so uh, the first uh, star that I will award is the uh, mini game star. Um, and the mini game star of the evening is joseph summer um he won three out of the six mini games that we played tonight um and so this is where like the little star would pop up above joe's head and he'd like jump up and get it and look excited about it um just like real just life. like that perfect <laughs> just <Joe>. like real life <laughs> <laughs> that said uh it wouldn't be a mario party without some bs uh bonus stars um so I asked you all for a number um, mm. earlier uh, out of one through eight. Um, so I have rolled a, a D8 uh, <laughs> dice. And so the number that I got was seven, which is Andrew's Ooh. number. Um, so the bonus star for random number star uh, <laughs> is being awarded to Andrew. Sweet. I'll take it. Um, we've got another star. Number star. The uh, the unlucky star. Now, normally you get this bonus star if you land on the most red spaces, but tonight we are giving it out to the person who is wearing the most red. Um, so, is anyone dressed in anything close-ish to red? I think Aubrey. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I can't tell what color. Is that red or is that brown? <laughs> <laughs> like a burgundy. Yeah, Close enough. Redder than what Joe and I are wearing. All right. So that is a bonus. The yeah, the right. happening star or the unlucky star goes to Aubrey. So we each got an extra star, which means the score didn't change. Uh yeah, so everyone is tied <laughs> to Mario Party star, correct, correct right now. Um the next star oh, that we, we are uh rewarding is the complainer star. And that is the <laughs> person that complained the most throughout the, <laughs> the game. It's like he thought uh, Delaney was going to be here. <laughs> and uh, so this one goes to Joe, who complained <laughs> a lot <laughs> about the, uh, the looking for love game specifically. Uh, there wasn't as much complaining as I thought there would be, honestly, uh, <laughs> about well, this. But Joe. Have to do the scissor one. So, yeah. Well, you didn't um, claim something was objectively the best either. The next star is the taco star oh. and is awarded to the person who most recently had tacos. So uh, when is the I last time that you had tacos? Tuesday. I had Taco Bell today at about 2.45. <sighs> Did you have a taco? Two tacos, the uh, chipotle wrap, and then a bean and rice burrito. That's a lot of... Okay, but I brought a burrito home from my grandma when I got Taco Bell last. I got beans and rice for my kid. <laughs> Joe, can you beat 245? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't even had a taco this week. Oh, that's what's uh, wrong with you. That's why your week went bad. And then the next star, the buddy star, normally rewarded for having a buddy, um, is going to go to the person who can get the first animal slash other person to come into the room and show them to the camera. 
Oh, for heaven's sakes. I had Grayson on here like five times. <laughs> that is not, true. Not even going to bother. You're not even just going to be like, hey, Abby. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and give this to to Aubrey because she's the only one who got up. There you okay. go. I was gonna say, wait, she came back with nobody, <laughs> so it's still yeah, up for grabs. She, she okay. put forth there the is. effort. There he is. And so There's we are all body. tied. We are all tied at two stars each. So that means the final star is going to go to the person, the shopping star. So whoever most recently purchased a video game. When was uh, your last video game purchase? I was going to buy Skyward Sword today, but I didn't. <laughs> um, I bought Return of the Oprah Din last week. I bought Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrade Intermission last week. An additional buddy. I, it's, I almost pre-ordered the physical copy of Spirit Fair today, but didn't. I'd have to look up exactly what day, but I feel like it was early last week, like a Monday or something. I haven't yeah. bought a game in a while. It's not me. Joe, do you know? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head without signing into Steam. Mm. And Steam wants me to do two-factor yeah, authentication. Of course, it's going to prompt me for that stupid email. But it was, the, it was the last day of the Steam sale. Let, me, let me look real quick. Someone can find I that got before I... For it. Oh, wait, that's a good idea. The email is probably still like in my trash folder somewhere. <laughs> so I delete most of my receipts. July 8th was the final day of the Steam sale. Which would have been I last Thursday. Emails on the 8th. Uh, I think Joe got it. Well, I bought Integrate, or I bought the DLC Intermission on the 6th. Okay. Does oh, uh, unrelated, but guess what finally shipped? Uh, I give up. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, Bioware extra special little packagey thing that didn't include the, game. the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Oh. oh My yeah. N7 well, helmet should get here on Monday. <laughs> That's nice. exciting, I guess. Nice. So the sixth is so the last I can remember. Large, so maybe it'll fit my Pulling head. up my account details now. Clicking view purchase history. The seventh. All right. So Joe takes it. Joe gets the shopping bonus star. And so that brings Joe to three stars total. Andrew to two stars. Aubrey to two stars. If I would only bought so, Skyward Sword today, if I would only right. spent $60 plus tax, <laughs> I could have won this pointless game. <laughs> so, so, Joe, you are the party star. Congratulations. And this is where Andrew will sprinkle in a little bit of like celebratory music. Uh, and yeah. maybe a, a Mario Waho or something like that, you know. If we don't want Nintendo to destroy our podcast. I mean, pitch it down. Even a better, few. you find a horribly <laughs> off-brand Mario. Wahoo! Yeah, he's got to find the clip of Aaron Hansen doing the Mario like "Let's a Go," but he just starts Here screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put the Fortnite song in there just for the hell of it. What is the Fortnite song? It's the like eight year old singing about Fortnite. Oh, it's the the like mm -hmm. it's a parody oh. of American Boy by Estelle. I uh, so many words you just said that I don't know. Kanye West. Wait, so I, Fortnite song has Kanye in it? No. <laughs> no. The okay. original song had like... Kanye West on it. And then the so, eight year old okay. did a Fortnite parody of that song. Are we just gonna have Dylan host the game every week now? Is that what we're gonna do from here on out? Is that not what we've been doing? <laughs> well, you missed some weeks, but <laughs> <laughs> no. We so, try to rotate. <laughs> so ideally I, my vision for this is that we play it again at some point, but in person so that I can actually like, there's so many more things I feel like we can do with a little, like make little Mario party mini games in person. So, okay. So, yeah. um, so maybe next time we have an in-person uh, episode, it's uh, maybe a Mario party in person. <laughs> Nice or something. Well, I don't think you could have come up with a more on-brand game for this episode. So no, this we appreciate it, Dylan. Fantastic work. 
Does anybody else have anything else that they want to shout out or say before we wrap this one up? That's a bunch of nope. shaking their heads head. there. So hey, they're watching it now. They, yeah, they, they, they heard. have to be. Gotta watch that end minutes. game. That end yeah. game had to have been so pointless for audio only. <laughs> yes. The uh, yeah, yeah. If they if they didn't make it through like the first two mini games, like they they're here now. They're watching. Right. Well, thank you, viewers. With that, I just want to say thanks for checking out this episode of the Level Playing Field podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Again, please go check out our website, levelplayingfieldgaming.com, where you can find all of our socials, our YouTube channel, and our Patreon. And if you want to write in the show directly, feel free to shoot us a message on social media or email us at lpfgamespodcast at gmail.com. A big thank you to my co-hosts, Joe, Aubrey, and Dylan. And an even bigger thank you to all of our listeners and viewers out there. We sincerely appreciate your support. Now say goodbye, everybody. See ya. Bye, everybody. See ya, everybody.